All right, here we go, everybody. We're here with another episode of the uh, Mari Partner Cast, and we got an exciting one today just because everyone's interested in rollover 401ks or rollover IRAs, but more that it's it could be a deadline issue here, especially if we're talking about the CARES Act. I'm here with George Bloor from My Soul 401k Financial. So appreciate joining us today, George, especially on a Saturday. Oh, my pleasure, John. Thanks so much for inviting me, and I'm uh, happy to talk to your group. Excited to talk to to the Mari group. Yeah, so yeah. Good. And it, it's so, just FYI, before we get into it, my solo41k.net. You could go over that uh, when we talk talk later. Okay. Tons, yeah, thanks tons for the of plug. information there, and uh, George knows could talk for days on this stuff. There, there's a lot <laughs> of things to chat about. I said, you know, we'll keep it 20 to 30 minutes, whatever is good for him. We can also bring him back for a live Q&A on a future live meeting. But go ahead and uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and uh, essentially sure. what you do. Absolutely. Thank you so much, John. So, yes, I, um, hopefully I'll try to get some good information for the Mari group and just introduce myself quickly. George Blower. Our company is called My Solo 401k Financial. So My Solo 401k Financial. The website is mysolo401k.net. So I'm one of the two owners of the company. So uh, my background, we have a, you know, we're a small team. We got 18 team members. Um, we've got offices in Detroit, which is where I'm based out of. And so, and we have another office in San Diego. And my personal background is I'm an attorney. So I've been practicing law since 2001 when I graduated from Harvard Law School. We started the company back in 2009, and we really specialize and focus on helping our clients use their retirement money for investing in alternative investments. So whether that's real estate or syndicated transactions or trust deeds, notes, cryptocurrency, people have been using it to fund their own business. So um, like you mentioned, I mean, it's a busy time of year, so I appreciate you uh, allowing us to do this on a Saturday. Um, we've got a lot of people trying to set up plans before December 31st to meet the December 31st deadline, which would allow them to preserve the right to make contributions to the plan for 2020. So we could touch on that a little bit, but I think um, just thinking about the Mari group and people who are looking to use their retirement money to invest in alternative investments. We could maybe start there, John, and I could kind of give a, an overview of a lot of the common issues and questions that we speak to our clients and prospects every day about. Per perfect, yeah, let's start, let's start there and just give a, like a general overview, overview of, if, if I called in and I had a retirement account that I wanted to make more useful, uh, mm -hmm. you know, how could you introduce me into something uh, like what you're providing. Yes, great. So that's a that's a classic kind of a scenario that we field. So um, the, there's a few threshold issues to consider. So one is whether you can access that money, that retirement account. So generally speaking, if the funds are in a former employer plan or an IRA, you're going to be able to access those those funds. So if they're in a current employer plan and you save the money since you've been at your job, in other words, you didn't roll it over from a previous plan, right? If you worked at Facebook and then you got a job at Google and had a 401k at Google and rolled over your Facebook 401k, even if you're still working at Google, you're going to be able to typically access the money that you at least rolled over without quitting your job. Otherwise, unless you're 59 and a half or older, you're not going to be able to access it until you quit. Now, the best way to verify that is just to call your administrator and ask them if you can roll it over to an IRA. If they say yes, then you can roll it over. So now, once you determine whether you can access the money, um, then the next step is the vehicle that, in which you're going to invest in these alternative investments. So we'll talk about one scenario is investing through a retirement account. And then we'll talk about another scenario, which is a hot topic right now, which is accessing money that's in a retirement account under the CARES Act, right? Okay. So let's touch on investing through a retirement account. So 
let's say the money's in a former employer plan or it's an IRA, right? You've got two basic paths you can go down. You could go down a 401k path and you could go down an IRA path. Now, when it comes to um, investing in alternative investments, the 401k path is going to be preferable. There's advantages to going down that path. But in order to do that, you have to qualify. So everybody qualifies to set up an IRA. You just have to be an individual, right? It's an individual retirement account. In order to set up a 401k though, you have to be in, 401ks are for employers. So if you're self-employed and you don't have any full-time W-2 employees working for you or for another business that you own or for a business or you don't have a spouse that has a business with employees, then you can set up a solo 401k for your self-employed business. And it doesn't have to be formally organized. So you could just be a sole proprietor, you're a realtor, or you're a solo practitioner attorney. You don't have any full-time W-2 employees working for you. You know, you could have a W-2 job in, in the tech industry, and then you've got a website hosting business on the side. So you can have a job, you participate in a 401k, but as long as you have that self-employment activity that you're reporting on your taxes, then, and you don't have the full-time W-2 employees working for you, you can set up a solo 401k. And so there are different types of solo 401ks. You can get a solo 401k at a brokerage where you can invest in mutual funds and make contributions. But if you wanna do something more advanced, like invest in real estate or other alternative investments, you need to go to a provider like us that has a plan that allows for those types of investments. So we are technically a plan provider. So we have an IRS approved plan, which allows for investing in real estate and other alter alternative investments. And really the four, a 401k is a trust. So it's a retirement trust. So it's, it's a trust that's sponsored by the employer and the assets are held in trust for the benefit of the employees. So if I'm John Smith, attorney, I've got my solo practitioner, you know, the, the, solo, sole, the sole proprietorship is sponsoring the trust. The assets are not a business asset. They're not even my personal asset now, right? They're held in trust for my future self. And so because the, the plan document, our document allows for investing in real estate and the statute the, that is, that it enabled 401k plans back in the 70s has always allowed for these types of investments, you can make it. And so you have to have an account set up in the name of the plan. So that account could be at a bank, it could be at a brokerage. So there are a lot of brokerages that will open up accounts for third party plans like ours, such as Fidelity, Schwab, TD Ameritrade. But then a lot of, you could also open up a bank account so now you've got a bank account in the name of your solo 401k, you got to fund it. So in this scenario, we're assuming that this person has money in a former employer plan. So they would roll over that money from their former employer plan to their new plan, which is sponsored by their self-employed business. That's not going to be a taxable event because it's going from one 401k to another. Now it's in this say bank account. Now they're free to invest it in real estate or notes. So that's one path you could go down. Now, if you're not eligible to set up the solo, and we'll come back to the mechanics of how to invest, but sticking at, at, a high, at the high level outline here. So if you're not eligible to set up the solo because you're not self-employed or because you have a business with employees, then the only way you could do it is through an IRA, but it has to be a special type of IRA that allows for investing in alternative investments. If you set up a you know, an IRA, a Vanguard, they're not going to allow you to go and buy a rental property with it, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to get it into a IRA that allows you to invest in an LLC. Now, the reason for that is because the LLC is going to give you checkbook control. So the IRA rules are different than the 401k rules. Under the 401k rules, you can open up an account in the name of the plan at a bank. You have direct access as the trustee. Under the IRA rules, the IRA account has to be at a financial institution or a custodian. And it's specifically got to be at a IRA custodian 
that allows for investing in alternative investments. So there are a number of self-directed IRA providers, such as Pensco, right, such as which uh, Pacific Premier now, such as Equity Trust, et cetera. And a lot of historically, the way that those companies grew up is they would hold the money, right? And they would hold the title. So you would get your IRA set up there. They allow you to invest in real estate, but they hold the money. So you got to go back to them to get your money. You know, the title is issued to the name of the trust for the benefit of your IRA. So the response to that was the concept of having the IRA invest in an LLC. So now your LLC is owned by your IRA. So at the trust company level, all they know is that your IRA is invested in the LLC. You serve as the manager of the LLC. So the members, your IRA, you're the manager. You open up a bank account in the name of the LLC. So the money, let's say it's, you're not self-employed or you've got a business with employees. You've got a Roth IRA at Vanguard. So you set up an IRA at a custodian, a self-directed IRA custodian that allows you to invest in an LLC. You roll your money into that Roth IRA and then you invest it into a brand new LLC. So then it goes you know, from the new Roth IRA to the LLC bank account. So now you have a bank account in the name of this LLC, you're the manager. So now you've got the checkbook control over the money. So now you invest in the name of that LLC. So that's another uh, product that we offer is the IRA LLC which allows people that are not eligible for the solo to still have checkbook control over their money and invest in alternative investments. So those are the two paths you could go down. Now we talked about how the 401k has certain advantages. So there's a number of advantages like higher contribution limits, the ability to take a 401k loan that apply to a 401k, right? But beyond that, when it comes to investing in alternative investments, one advantage is that you have checkbook control of your money without having to set up an LLC, right? In some states, it can be expensive to have an LLC. In Massachusetts, it's $500 annual fee per year. In California, there's an $800 franchise tax. So some people don't want to have to mess around with an LLC. Above and beyond that, there are certain tax advantages. So there is a special tax called unrelated debt finance income tax. So if you were to buy, say, a rental property and you wanted to leverage that investment inside of your IRA, you can do it, but you have to use a special kind of financing called non-recourse financing, which I'm sure your audience is probably familiar with. But if, so meaning that the only recourse of the lender is the property. So you can't personally guarantee it. The lender can't go over, can't go after other assets in the plan. So there are specialty lenders out there that it will lend to IRA plans or 401k plans. But back to the tax difference, if you own a property that's leveraged inside of your IRA, such as through this IRA LLC, the income attributable to that investment will be subject to tax. It will be subject to unrelated debt finance income tax, UDFI. There is an exception, though, to that tax that applies to 401k plans that use debt to acquire real estate. So that's a very big difference, right? You could have the same property inside of your 401k. It's going to continue to grow on a tax-deferred basis. All the income is going to be tax-deferred, whereas the property held inside of an IRA would be subject to this UD UDFI tax. And the UDFI tax rates can be very high, like up to 40%. So that would be a huge advantage of going down the solo 401k path. <clears throat> Did you say uh, that if it's non-recourse, uh, for example, many syndications are, you still would be subject to that tax if you're a traditional IRA investing in it? Well, it has to be non-recourse, whether it's a 401k or an IRA investment. Okay. So what triggers the UDFI is not whether it's non-recourse, it has to be non-recourse. What triggers the UDFI is that you're doing it through an IRA. <clears throat> I gotcha. I gotcha. So that, that's the, okay. So you said the UF, uh, UDFI is, is triggered by the debt portion of that, even if it's non-recourse. Exactly. It has to be non-recourse. It's, it's triggered by the debt portion. So it's, it's a, it's a ratio. So it depends on the ratio of, uh, of the amount that was financed. And so that, so if half of it is financed, say a rough, you know, in simple terms, 
then half of the income is subject to the UDFI. <clears throat> so uh, just real quick here, um, one thing that obviously is required is, is a sponsor for the plan. Um, it, it, is, there, is there a way where someone could still do this 401k, uh, this 401k trust if, if uh, for example, maybe you get income but you don't take payroll from, uh, from your business? Or Good question. So let's say you have an S corporation, right? Then you're not taking any W-2 wages from your S corporation. Right. Because your scenario, right? Right. No, you want it to have at least some, if it's an S corporation, then the way that you report self-employment income is W-2 wages. So you would want at least some W-2 wages to justify and demonstrate and document that you are self-employed. Um, so, uh, for example, if you're just doing a rollover and no contributions, you technically don't have to uh, pay yourself. Is that correct? Well, so the, the one issue is qualifying for the plan. Once you qualify for the plan, there's no minimum contribution requirement. So you could just fund the 401k with a rollover, mm -hmm. but you still need to show that you are self-employed on your taxes. So the easiest way to demonstrate, you know, that the easiest way for the IRS to verify that you're self-employed is whether or not you're reporting self-employment activity, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't have to have a huge amount. You know, there's not like a necessarily like a minimum amount that you have. It doesn't you don't have to have like fifty thousand dollars or something like that, you know? So, so you the issue would be is if you have an S corp, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not reporting any W two wages, then it looks like you're just an owner of that S corporation, right? Got it. So, I mean, the point of a 401k is for people who work to be able to save for retirement. So it's not for investors, right? So it's not just for owners, it's for employees. You got to have that earned income to justify the fact that you have uh, this 401k. So if you, you could have a Schedule C, right? If you're a sole proprietor, Schedule C income would be earned income. Or if it's an S corp, it would be W two wages. Got it. So you could ten ninety nine uh, get some wages that way. Yeah, as, long as you could end up with some Schedule C via the via yeah. ten ninety nine miscellaneous. Yes. <clears throat> Got it. <clears throat> Sounds okay. good. So then, so that's kind of a high level about the different paths to go down to invest. You know, to use retirement money to invest in alternative investments, and we'll come back to some of the mechanics and what we could talk about Roth. But before we do that, let's pause and go back to the CARES Act point, because I want to make sure we get that in. Sure. So CARES Act can come up in two contexts at a high level here. One would be a scenario where someone wants to be able to access money to be able to invest, and they want to do it though in their own name, right? Like let's say that they have you know, they just are looking to invest in a syndicated transaction or they're looking to, they've got a rental property already in their own name. So they want to make the investment in their name, right? But they want to access the money that's in their retirement account. So it's like, so it's like they're a bank, it's a, a bank to themselves, you know? So CARES Act presents an opportunity to access money that you might otherwise not be able to access. So a scenario here would be, let's say the money is in a current employer plan, right? So typically you can't access money in a current employer plan until you're 59 and a half, unless you rolled the money over from a previous plan. So if you qualify under the CARES Act, so in simple terms, that means you've been medically or financially impacted by COVID, right? You are a household member tested positive, or you, you know, your business suffered financially. So the, that's, in simple terms, though, that's how you qualify. Then you have until the end of the year to take a distribution of 100% of your retirement account balance, not to exceed $100,000. And there's multiple benefits of taking out a distribution under the CARES Act. One is there's no withholding. So typically when you take money out of a plan, there's a 20% withholding. That's waived. Another benefit Typically, it's going to be subject to a 10% penalty if you're under 59 and a half. That's waived. 
another benefit. Typically, you have to pay taxes on the 100% of the amount of the distribution. You've got to include it in your income. So it's as if you made another $100,000 that you would have to pay taxes on for 2020. Under the CARES Act, they allow you to spread out the tax burden over three years. So if you take 90,000 out, you report 30,000 of income in 2020, 2021, and 2022. And then finally, they allow you to recontribute that money and they give you three years and a day from the date of the distribution to recontribute that money. It could go back into the same plan that you took it from, or it could go into an IRA or another plan. It's gotta be a like to like. So if you take out pre-tax money, it's gotta go into a pre-tax account. If you take out Roth money, it's gotta go into a Roth account. And so if you recontribute 100%, then you don't owe any taxes. So it's effectively a 0% you know, interest-free loan. Now, if you do that by, at the end of the third year, you would have had to have paid taxes in year one and year two, like we talked about. So you could go back and apply for a refund. Alternatively, if you pay back at least one third each year, then you never pay taxes. So if you took a $90,000 distribution under the CARES Act and you recontribute $30,000 by April 15th or October 15th, if you file a timely extension, then you don't pay taxes on that 30,000 because remember you're spreading it out. And then if you do it again in the second year, then you don't pay taxes in the second year. And then if you do it again in the third year, now you don't pay taxes at all. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, that's some, that's some good key information uh, for the CARES Act stuff because I was uh, wondering exactly how uh, taxes would work if, if you were to, you know, maybe someone only had a small amount so they wanted to take it out as distribution or if they have 100K, they just wanted to roll over for more flexibility investments, then, then obviously yeah. you wouldn't have to pay taxes. So <clears throat> that cleared it up. No, appreciate it. So let's talk about the other prong there, though, of the CARES Act. So that one is using it for funding your own investments, right? So another, though, would be if you were trying to roll it over, so you still want to be able to invest in these alternative investments through the retirement account. Mm -hmm. So if you are eligible to set up a solo 401k, let's say, because you've got your own business, but let's say you also have a day job and money is trapped inside of your current plan because you still work there. You saved it while you were there. You're under 59 and a half. If you've been impacted under COVID and the employer allows it, which pretty much all will probably do because they have the option to opt out. But if they allow it, you could take the, the, the CARES Act distribution and then you could immediately recontribute the full amount to the solo so you don't owe any taxes. But now it's in a solo where you can now invest it how you want to. Does that make sense? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think, so, go ahead. Oh, I was just, I was just saying, um, you know, so, some people ask me, you know, why you may want to do this, but I mean, if you look at it, you're fairly restricted as far as uh, what to invest in is if you were going to keep it in, you know, the, Broker sure. account for mutual funds or for stocks to invest in. I mean, uh, it sounds like you could even uh, put in your you know 401k account and use some of that to open up a trading account and do similar things you were in your 401k. Is that correct? Yes, you could open up a brokerage account under the solo 401k, and you could still have you know some people, for example, they have got a bank account and a brokerage account. So between deals, they put it into a brokerage account to invest it in the stock market. Sure. And you yeah. have options that aren't restricted again to a handful of horrible mutual fund choices usually. Exactly. Yep. So even, so the brokerage accounts that are set up for our customers, like we prepare all the paperwork to do that. The brokerage accounts are going to be like an IRA. So it's a very wide range of options. So it's, you know, all types of equities, mutual funds, you know, et cetera, that the brokerage offers. But on top of that, they could do alternative investments because the plan that governs their account is our plan, the IRS approved plan that allows them to make those alternative investments. And uh, just to reiterate, 
the we only have a few weeks to mainly do this for obviously you could do this for like 401k accounts that are active that no other time we'd be able to do this and then ira accounts but um and and we talked about before you could do it in the future for ira accounts since those those aren't trapped under employer but you wouldn't necessarily have that uh you couldn't do it without penalty yeah exactly so you um in terms of the standard rules as far as taking a distribution from an IRA is that you can do it any time. So there's no triggering event. Now you always had the 60 day rollover. So that existed before the CARES Act and it'll exist after the CARES Act. So the rules changed around 60 day rollovers in the past couple of years. Historically, you could take out um, as many as you want. So let's define a 60 day rollover. 60 day rollover is where you take out money from your IRA, you recontribute it within 60 days, exactly calendar days, there's no extensions, then you don't owe any taxes or penalties on that amount. So historically, uh, individuals would take out multiple 60 day rollovers throughout the year from their IRA. So the uh, IRS put a stop to that. Now you can only do it once per rolling 12 month period. So if you don't uh, recontribute it, now you're gonna have to pay taxes and penalties if you're under 59 and a half. So the CARES Act, one way to think of it is it's like a 60 day rollover, but you've got three years in a day to recontribute the money. So you're right. I mean, after the CARES Act, you could still do this. Um, but it's still going to give you those advantages because you also can spread out the taxes as you noted, you know? So I, I, I know people will ask too. Um, it, it seems like some of the, uh, the, 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 the burden, um, uh, of, of proof that does that, is that relied on, um, for example, like fidelity, that's 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 uh, sponsoring the the your current 401k because people want to know be like how do, do I need to send in papers or how does it differ per per employer of you know proving uh, hardship because obviously it's almost relative and it can vary a little bit right from place to place well for the CARES Act they've got um, safe harbor forms that you just um, certify to the administrator and they don't police it. You know? <laughs> right, so you, right. You so take the burden. Yeah, you know? I've heard uh, a, a handful of people right now that you literally call them up and you say, uh, "When to take a CARES Act distribution?" They'll be like, they'll read off some hardships, and it, it could vary from COVID to financial distress. Is like, what's that mean? And you just say yes, and they're like, "Okay, checks on the way." And and I've heard this for uh, multiple people, so <clears throat> I don't think people should be uh, too scared that <clears throat> they're going to have to, re you know, put in a, a 200 page report saying this is why I have no. something like that. So it's fairly simple and straightforward. Yeah. I think politically they're trying to, they want to use this as a way for people to give money quickly. Sure. Cause sure. the argument is, is that you do need it because you've been impacted by COVID. Right. Right. <clears throat> um, one thing to just because I know it's out there, there there's the QRP programs. It sounds like this might be maybe more marketed or fancier name for something like this that they might not need to pay over for. Because it sounds like a lot of times this this type of trust will, will do everything someone needs and they don't have to get uh, what they call it, an enhanced uh, qualified retirement plan. Is that what they call it? Yeah, that? that's essentially uh, marketing. So the, this is the solo 401k, the type of solo 401k that I'm referring to is going to give you all, it's going to give you maximum flexibility under the rules in terms of control of your money with a checkbook control, in terms of investments, in terms of high contribution limits. I mean, the solo 401k has the highest contribution limits of any defined contribution plan out there. So yeah, that's essentially a marketing term. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, I would try to point that out to people, saying, you know, th those some of those other plans are are much higher in pricing just uh, just for that. Um, I know, for example, people want to know uh, pricing. As always, it, it varies per, per per setup you're doing. Is there uh, estimates on what something like this could cost for uh, different products? 
Oh yeah, so we have a totally flat fee structure. We charge uh, four twenty-five is the establishment cost and one twenty-five a year. So the initial cost is five hundred and fifty dollars, and then we email an invoice where you can pay the one twenty-five uh, annual fee for the second year, twelve months later. So there's no other cost whatsoever, uh, regardless of the support that's needed, the compliance support that's needed, et cetera. And, and that's a great deal because, um, you know, I've talked to people about costs and them looking around. I mean, there, there, there's places out there, like I said, they're using fancier marketing terms. Uh, they, they'll, they'll offer things in their product that you won't necessarily need. Maybe it's additional benefit for a bunch of employees, which you won't have. And they'll, several thousand more. And maybe the yearly upkeep uh, is even more than that hundreds of dollars. So just right. to let people know, I know people will price shop and look at other products. It's going to be one of the lowest around. And especially for someone that has that much experience like you do, you, you've been very helpful. You guys put out YouTube videos all the time, uh, going in depth of all this stuff. Um, just giving you a call is probably a question you won't know. <clears throat> so really, uh, I think people should check into the site, uh, and, and Thank get you. more information there. <clears throat> oh, I appreciate that, John. Yeah. I mean, our philosophy, I mean, is that, as I mentioned, I mean, I'm one of the two owners of the company, so we definitely are all about education and we want to be, we strive to provide value so that people can you know, acts because we, you know, we as small business owners, we understand that, you know, these are other small business owners and they're spending their own money and they got to make sure they're getting good value for their, their service. And it's ultimately, it's going to be best for the industry if people do things the right way, you know? <laughs> so that's yeah. why we really emphasize education. So I appreciate the chance to do some education here. So no, appreciate taking some time and uh, we'll wrap it up here. I know you do these things every day and you're constantly on the phone. So I want to let you have uh, your weekend, but just if, if nothing else, just um, for the viewers out there, just realize that th I think this is a, a tool that should be utilized. The, the CARES Act almost makes it, <clears throat> in my opinion, a no brainer to take advantage of a trust like this because just of, of flexibility. I know, I know some people don't pay too much attention to their retirement accounts, but just the opportunity cost and not being able to do what you want to it for next 20, 30, 40, 50 years is huge on what you could be making for returns for other deals, whether that's like syndications, that's investing in your own stocks and other deals. There's a laundry list of things you can invest in. Um, that's everything, you know, just, Keeping in the market, not being able to do what you want with your own money, having all these restrictions, um, you know, management fees from mutual funds, um, you know, getting fleeced in the market every so often and not being able to, to have any authority of your account uh, is, is a very big deal. So I stress that people really should look into this. Uh, and even if, you know, you need time and there's some people that have IRAs um, that want to look into it, whatever months later, still take a look into it. Cause I think this is a big deal, but for the people with the, the, the yeah. CARES Act distribution, shoot, even if you have the IRA accounts, definitely uh, give George a call. Cause uh, um, you only have so many weeks and, and stuff could be done real quick because they can liquidate the accounts and have checks out within a week. And uh, to get the process started, you could do it same day for, for a lot of places like Fidelity. Amen. That's fantastic, John. Yeah, I agree on all fronts. And I would say that if you want to look at a deeper dive as far as uh, the recontribution options, if you go to YouTube and Google or search on YouTube for a deep dive CARES Act distribution, we put a, a good webinar out there that goes through lots of different scenarios. So that might be helpful. And uh, you can comment on the uh, all of our webinars and we get back to people with, you know, 24 business hours. Yeah, and, and, um, and then you guys have your own YouTube channel. Go ahead and give people your, your contact info, uh, oh, email thank you. numbers, website. Um, obviously you could just look up probably this, my soul 401k on YouTube. Uh, leave, leave them with that. <clears throat> okay. Thanks again, John. Yes. Yeah, so you can contact us at, uh, uh my solo 401k.net is the website. You can call us at 1-800-489-7571. Uh, you can email us. Uh, please email at business at mysolo401k.net. And then 
yeah, just YouTube, my solo 401k financial that we put out uh, webinars every week. Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> well, appreciate the information. Uh, I know you have another call, so you're, you're always working. And like you said, this is a super busy time. So people uh, don't necessarily wait, get the questions answered, give them a call because you know, they're the, he has, you got to get in line for, for all this because people understand the, the power of this count, especially now. So thanks again, uh, George. Uh, appreciate it. We'll get this out next week because, you know, it's, it's a timeline thing. Usually we have it in a queue, so we'll get it out. <clears throat> and then um, everyone, just remember, definitely check out Mary.org. There's a lot of membership benefits there. Tell your friends to join, join the, uh, uh, the, the Mary group. Kim Tucker does an awesome job uh, navigating us every day through, through real estate. So thanks again, George. Uh, everyone check out the website and we appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon uh, for a possible Q and a here in the future. Oh, that will be fantastic. I look forward to it. Right. Thank you, John. Thanks, George. Have a good weekend. Appreciate okay, it. Do the same. Yeah. Bye -bye. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. -bye.